Greetings, citizens of Nerdropolis. Sean Todd here, the mayor of Nerdropolis, and on this episode of Real Insights, my guest is actor Rafael Alejandro, who stars in Netflix's Incoming. Hello, Rafael. What's going on? Uh, nothing much. How are you? I'm doing great. It's great to meet you finally. Uh, I got to give you props for an awesome career that started at such a young age. And also, uh, happy birthday. I think your birthday's in a couple of days, is it not? Uh, yeah, it is August 22nd. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so happy early birthday to you. Thank uh, you. Great timing also for your latest film uh, coming out on Netflix. Incoming, a raunchy teen comedy, man, that I was surprised about because we don't get many of them. And this one was... <laughs> is, uh, hilarious and super raunchy but it, yeah it's coming out in a couple of days it's kind of like a birthday gift for you as well yeah yeah basically yeah just the day after my birthday august 23rd yeah it's basically like an, uh, a little late birthday present <laughs> yeah no i absolutely love it i gotta know first off you know how did this project land in your lap and like what did you like most about your character connor and like i said you know we don't get many of these films so it's a great uh, surprise that netflix is bringing this to us yeah um, I mean, I've been telling this to everybody, like when I first wrote, uh, when I first read the, the script, uh, I was laughing out loud, like every single page, it was absolutely hilarious. So I knew I wanted to be a part of it. And as soon as I read Connor, I was like, that's him. That's, that's who I want to be. So it was definitely like, I, I really just wanted to completely be a part of this project, not only because it was absolutely hilarious, but just like you said, like, you know, nowadays, like my kind of generation doesn't really have any kind of raunchy comedy like that. You know, the most recent one I think has been kind of super bad, um, which is absolutely hilarious, but you know, like my generation doesn't have something like that. So to finally kind of bring back that kind of genre, I think I'm I'm inc incredibly honored. And I hope this becomes kind of like a similar cult classic kind of thing. Yeah, I really hope this really influences other people to make these movies because there was a time, you probably weren't even born then, I don't know, but <laughs> there was a time where we had a lot of them and it was just so many. And I was actually probably your age watching them or younger um, you know, sneaking into some of the theaters to watch them or, you know, getting my parents to get them at Blockbuster for me. Uh, yeah. But there was a whole time where there was a lot of them. So it's exciting that Incoming is going to join that large yeah. collection and hopefully bring back that genre. This film does take place during freshman year. Uh, what parts of the film were the most relatable to your own first year of high school? Uh, definitely like the, like kind of like the shock because it's really diff it's like really different vibe in terms of like when I was doing my freshman year, I was working, um, on a TV show, um, at the time. So I wasn't really doing like that typical high school experience, but in terms of like them and like dealing with the academics and, and the different people that you deal with when you like actually like do go to school, because I was like, I had like a campus that you know I was like online but like I had like a campus so definitely like a completely different vibe different teachers different everything and you know being shocked and like not sure what to do is definitely very relatable um to the experiences we have uh in the in the in the movie yeah that's what I really liked about it a lot of memories came back obviously not the partying aspect of it I was a good kid I was yeah. a nerdy kid I was actually like a punk rocker skateboarder type of kid had a band in Ooh. high school and uh loved video games and movies I mean that was really my yeah. life same um, same bro you skate <laughs> yeah I used to skateboard and just do oh, the, cool. um, like inline skating and speed skating so that was the good old yeah. days <laughs> I, I miss it man I, I feel yeah, like I'm talking yeah, to my younger like... self right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, so a lot of great memories there. Uh, you you mentioned super bad. Do you have any other favorite teen comedies? And I gotta know, since it was in a scene in, in incoming, what is your go to at Taco Bell? Um, so the Taco Bell question, definitely my go to is a Crunchwrap Supreme, uh, <laughs> with obviously ground beef and all the works, and then three Doritos Tacos Locos absolute bomb and then a baja blast like you gotta just Man, i'm talking out. to my younger self i love those crunch wrap supremes that's like my go-to <laughs> exactly the... i mean when i first had it i was like how is how did i not know about this before i was only eating the doritos tacos locos i was like it was like a mind-blowing experience having the crunch wrap um and then you talked about the super bad yeah like um honestly i had watched super bad um before incoming so you know like re-watching some scenes or you know going back I really thought it had a lot of you know the inspiration from it one thing that um that I thought was pretty funny is that um I uh I watched uh Goodfellas um 
particularly, I mean, it's not in that same genre at all, but particularly because I felt like um, Joe Pesci's um, like kind of, you know, angry, you know, like angry for nothing, you know, short guy kind of thing was uh, was something that I could definitely take inspiration from uh, and like use in order to, you know, put my own twist on the role, but kind of see what others like him, you know, did before me in the same similar kind of role. No, I love it. And you're definitely one of the standouts of the film. Uh, do you have a favorite scene in the movie? There's so many good scenes, but do you have one, not just the scene itself, maybe filming it was just a fun time or just a hilarious moment happened with one of the scenes? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's two scenes that mainly come to mind. So obviously, I don't know if this is going to release after uh, the movie has already released. Um, so about spoilers or something. Um, but there is a, a moment, one of my favorite moments. Uh, it's like kind of like the climax kind of moment of you know Ramon and I's storyline uh where you know we're with Katrina in the car and some nasty things happen and everything goes wrong I absolutely loved filming that scene it was hilarious and when I originally read the script that was the scene that I was so excited to shoot um and then another scene that I felt like was so cool was uh where like where I think it's like after uh Bardia and Mason like come back from the cafeteria and then we meet outside like for lunch um that scene was absolutely hilarious because it's one of the my favorite scenes because us four boys had so much chemistry um and you know we did some improvisation too i mean that uh, they've already released some scenes of like uh that uh, of that moment where like you know barty and i like throw chips at each other and that was kind of like improvisation so it really was just so collaborative and i loved doing it with all the other three boys it was amazing Great chemistry among the boys. I love it. It reminded me of my time and just having close friends and just getting into things, I guess. And, you know, how fun was the set with those co-stars? You speak of Ramon, Bardia, uh, who actually spoke to Bardia. He's my Persian brother. And, uh, and of course, uh, Mason Thames, who actually I got to know a few weeks ago when I got to host one of his panels at a con. And that was really great. That was actually with Walker Scobell, oh, yeah. too. That was a crazy experience. Yeah. But, yeah, I feel like... Y'all got a group chat going or something, I guess now. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. We really do. Uh, I usually, I'm super close with uh, with Mason uh, and Ramon and Bardia. We, we really like when we got to the set. I mean, Ramon and I had already kind of known each other. We were both on Disney Channel. So uh, we met at like a different events and stuff. So being able to work with him this time was like so much fun. But Mason and Bardia, I didn't know. But like the chemistry was just like instant. And I and I absolutely love like working with them and hanging out with them and like, you know, playing like we just like, play on set. Like, I don't know, just like do shenanigans, like throw balls around and stuff like that, you know, and it was just it was so much fun. It really felt like we were just four friends going through these experiences in the movie and I think that that's one of the things that makes the movie kind of special in my opinion is that you know it really feels like we are those four boys we are those four friends you know going through these crazy moments in the movie no I love that and I really think outside the jokes and the craziness I think the film works because you you believe the four of y'all are great friends and going through this together and uh, go through y'all's antics and everything else that goes on. But yeah, incoming on Netflix, uh, definitely a must watch. I absolutely loved it. I wanted to ask you, what was it like stepping into the magical world of Once Upon a Time and playing Roland? It was absolutely amazing, especially since it was uh, one of the first bigger roles that I did um it was the I think it was the first audition that I did for a tv show um and I got it and it was just I, like it was in a surreal moment of just being able to book it it was like amazing and then finally being able to go and like I went into the costume rooms uh and then they like tailored a, a cape for me like a leather cape with like these boots and this everything like I literally felt like a like a fairy tale superhero <laughs> so so like honestly I, I I think I was like six years old at the time to to be able to go through experience like that and then be able to meet you know there was sean mcguire and uh lana paria um like you know they made me feel so at home and they were like you know my onset parents as well so that whole experience of once upon a time i i cherish it so much because it was like the beginning of my career and it you know it just set me up for how much i loved acting and the collaborative experience that is you know sets film sets no i love hearing that once upon a time i mean it's such a crucial show i guess now everyone loves a big fan base so to be part of that is definitely something special and you know it set you up for greatness already and you're just getting started right. i feel like uh i've been following the wild robot for some time and i can't wait to watch this when it comes out next month what can yeah. you tell us about your character peck and what drew you to this project 
Um, well, one big thing was that uh, I knew um, the producer's name is Jeff. Um, we had worked with each other on Boss Baby 2. I played uh, Nate back then. Um, that was a super fun project. So obviously, you know, when he asked me, you know, about, you know, Peck and playing Peck, I was like, of course. I mean, I loved working with him and just the role is super cool. I've, I've played different villains, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't know if I can spoil too much about uh, my character, but, you know, uh, you know, he's going to be, uh, he's going to be another geese and i did a bit of a a bit of a different voice than my usual talking voice so maybe you won't recognize me um but uh it was super fun and being able to collaborate with the director which i believe directed uh, how to train your dragon as well um so being able to you know be amongst that and being amongst a cast that is just absolutely insane it's like a-lister after a-lister after amazing actor um i'm just so fortunate to have been a part of this project and it has a beautiful message too so i cannot wait for people to see it that's what I'm excited about for the messaging and also the the animation. It looks amazing, something different and something we haven't yeah. seen really before. What do you love yeah. most about working on an animated project, especially this one? Yeah, I think, you know, voiceover in general, one thing I really love about it is that it's it allows you to really focus it, it has it's like in the sense of it, it like it's different than acting in the sense of like now you don't have to worry about your your like your facial features or whatever like that like the facial stuff you're doing but you know a lot of it is the emphasis on the voice right and like making sure that you hear like your smile or something like that right but one thing that i absolutely love is that actually it, it feels like a like a very freeing experience you know like when you're in the room, whatever you need to do in order to get into that character, whatever you need to do and to do that, even if it's something ridiculous, you know, or like some kind of posture, a weird thing you're doing, you know, it, it, and everything you do to get into the character is just so freeing and so cool that I, I just absolutely fell in love with voiceover. And then being able to see it be animated, you know, like that's one thing that I, I remember I did a, a Lego Star Wars project um, where I like, I was actually like a Jedi thing. I like didn't know I had the force. And then at the end of like a force, like something, it was really cool. Um, but being able to, you know, do the project and then see, you know, like I, I did like some other lines that they added like later on, I did another session and then being able to see, you know, the actual animation, what they would do with my voice, how they would do it. I think it's just so admirable because, <laughs> because you know i'm i'm not i'm not always the greatest with art i'm i'm better with like music and stuff but when it comes to drawing and stuff um i don't know how to do that so it's so i i i'm always so like wowed by all all the animation and how it comes to life like how my voice comes into the character so i love being a part of animation projects because of all those reasons no those are all great reasons animations is such a special art form and it, it's really beautiful at the same time and the wild robot's going to be one of those films that people are going to love i can tell just by the trailers an amazing yeah. voice cast did you get to share any time with the in the recording booth with any of the cast at all or kind of more isolated uh it was a bit more isolated um i uh i had obviously i had worked very closely with the uh director um uh but i didn't get to work with any regretfully i didn't get to work with any of the uh, other great cast um but um but i uh, i got to work with i think i got to meet um another one of the uh, geese in the in the flock in the flock um and he was really cool so um yeah in general i mean it was just it was really cool and, and i can't wait to to meet them at future events yeah that's gonna be a great film that everyone needs to put on their radar and lastly you know what has it been like returning to your role as hugo in acapulco uh it was uh it was amazing uh, um i mean just being able to get the call to be able to play it again i think it was really great because i was able to um add a different layer to the character um obviously you know in the original how to be a latin lover uh he was very nerdy and you know super like into like astronomy and all this stuff and uh and now you know he it was it was like a different character it's like a different variant of him but that was really cool because i was able to add like on my own twist of like that kind of like teenager kind of attitude thing uh so it was really really fun to reprise the role and be able to work with uh with my you know Eugenio Derbez which I um I had known obviously back then and he's really fun yeah another great project of yours and, and that show is killing it everyone's loving it uh what a wonderful journey you've been on so far I, I love that and it was great chatting yeah. with you and I'm really looking forward to what you do next and man you're just I feel like you have a lot under your belt already but <laughs> you have a lot more miles to go and you're gonna impress us with more projects so it's great catching up with you 
Thank you. It's great catching up with you, man. Once again, this is Sean Tarj, the mayor of Nortropolis, and stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers.